Hey, what's up guys? Tony here. And if you didn't catch that, it says I've got a week left before my advancement goals are over for the first set of advancement goals. And I'm still double A bench. And we're going to get in the first game right here. Uh, we can see our record's 8-0 right now. We're going to do some BP. It's been a while since I've done some MLB 11 to show. And uh, basically what I want to do is I want to try to touch on a handful of topics today. And mainly because this is kind of a long video. So I've, I've made myself a handy dandy list here and let's go to town. Now, first things first, All-Star Game. It's just yesterday. The National League won. Um, I believe they won last year as well. I can't remember because I didn't really watch it. I was kind of a bad baseball fan. Uh, and I didn't catch it yesterday because I was working. But I saw that they won the 5 or 1 or something like that. Adrian Gonzalez hits a home run. Prince Fielder hit a home run. I think he hit like a three-run shot. Best thing about the All-Star game, Heath Bell sprinting in from the bullpen, sliding there uh, in the infield, going up to uh, the pitcher's mound. I think uh, as far as I understand, that made like Sports Center and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I didn't get a chance to watch it last night. I um, <laughs> I think I fell asleep on my couch last night watching Top Gear or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, oh, just quite a little tangent here. I found Top Gear on my brother's Netflix, so I've been watching a little bit of that. And I actually want, I think I'm going to do a Gran Turismo 5 video here pretty soon. I want to show you one of the funniest clips I've ever seen at a Top Gear. It, I mean, it, it's hilarious. But, uh, anyways, yeah, so the All-Star game. Um, I'll be honest. I used to... Well, I used to like. I prefer when the All-Star game doesn't have any sort of meaning to it. Because uh, now the All-Star game determines which team is going to be home team in the World Series. So you've got, if the National League, the National League won this year, the National League team is going to be the home team. The American League, when they stomped the shit out of the National League for, God, it was so many years in a row. They had the home field advantage. And I don't, uh, you know, and that's what I don't like about it. I really think it should go to the team that has the best record. That's just really the, the only fair way to play it. Because, I mean, you know, these guys, it's just something fun was lost. Because I remember this one All-Star game, and I might have said this before in a commentary uh, previously, previously in a commentary. Um, but there was this one time back when Randy Johnson was pitching with the, um, the Mariners. This was a long time ago, 97, 98-ish, I think it was. And Larry Walker was hitting. He's a left-handed hitter. And it was an All-Star game. I can't remember where the All-Star game was. Um, maybe it was at Mile High. I don't know. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. Um, Randy Johnson at the time was kind of known as a wild pitcher. He, you know, he threw really hard. He was kind of wild. And he threw up and in on Larry Walker. And Larry Walker, you know, and this is the fun part about the All-Star game. He took his helmet off, flipped it around backwards, stepped in the right-handed batter's box for a pitch, took a pitch, and then went back to the left-hand side. And it's stuff like that. It's that fun factor that I think is has gotten lost now with, the pressure of something, uh, the the, the All-Star game meaning something. And that's just the way I feel. A lot of people seem to love it. I don't, you know, I don't particularly care for it. It's just, I, I think it seems kind of unnecessary. Um, and uh, and then, you know, actually, good thing this All-Star game, All game didn't go this, but uh, this one, like a long, you know, because last year, that's what I remember about last year is that it went to extra innings and, and they were talking about, you know, Bud Selig calling the game after so many innings or whatever because they didn't want to burn up pitchers and teams are starting to freak out about their pitchers throwing too many innings. And uh, I've always remember, remembered that pitchers, you know, starting pitchers will go in and they'll pitch in the All-Star game. It's usually starting pitchers who come in, like starting pitchers and closers. You don't see very many relievers getting all-star, you know, ballots. I think they do get, you know, to the all-star game. But, you know, if you've got, I don't know, six starting pitchers, you're going to pitch, you know, each guy, like at least an inning because, well, they're starting pitchers. And to be honest, starting pitchers are like uh, lead singers of bands, you know. You don't have a relief pitcher pitch in front of a starting pitcher. You know those guys are the the, the front line, the headliners, most likely they're the ace of their staff. Um, that team wants to make sure they're represented and they want to be represented. So, you know, relief pitchers kind of get thrown under the bus here. But, um, anyways, the thing is though is, bas just to reiterate, I'm not much of a fan of it. I don't mind it at all. <clears throat> I just prefer the game to be a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun. 
and not have any stakes because it's supposed to be a lighthearted, fun game where, um, you know, it's just to take a couple days off. It's for the fans, stuff like that. Now, what, what is really for the fans, what I love to watch is the Home Run Derby. And I had class on, let's see here, what is today? No, I didn't have class on Monday. What was I doing on Monday that I totally spaced? Anyways, I caught round two of the Home Run Derby. I missed round one. So I didn't get a chance to watch Batista and uh, all the other sluggers. But I turned it on just in time to watch Andrew Gonzalez. He had a shit ton of home runs. I think he hit like 11 or something the second round. Beat David Ortiz. Um, Robinson Cano. Oh, no, maybe it was when Robinson Cano was hitting. Anyways, Robinson Cano and then Adrian Gonzalez were both uh, in the final the final round. And I, you know what? I had this feeling that Robinson Cano was going to beat Adrian Gonzalez. I didn't want to think it because it's a Yankee. It's Robinson Cano, and it's a second baseman of all players. But that guy has got some serious bop in his bat, and he's got some serious endurance. I've never seen a second base. Well, maybe with the exception of Chase Utley. I haven't seen a second baseman that much power in his bat. I mean, he can really mash the ball, and uh, he hit the ton of the ball. And uh, it was kind of cool that his dad, oh, right here, that's a base running blunder that I would not have done in real life. Uh, because I couldn't really judge if it was right at the third baseman, I thought it was kind of to his left, uh, which gave me a lot more time. Apparently, I, I didn't have enough time, so that was kind of a base running blunder on my part, which I shouldn't have done because um, they would have thrown home in a tie game. You know, I got to make sure they get to the shortstop. If they're playing deep, you know, you know. But anyways, like I thought it was going to go to the 5.5 hole. It didn't. Base running blunder on my part. Um, so anyways, yeah, that was really cool. See Robinson Cano's father throw, you know, him. Uh, and they, both of them, the father-son combination, was able to win the home run derby, which is cool. I always love it watching the totals when the State Farm ball comes out, the golden ball. And you see, like, State Farm ends up donating, like, half a million dollars to charities or various charities I'm not sure where it goes to but it's kind of funny I'm just like whoa man they spend some serious money when those sluggers are hitting home runs on the uh, with nine outs you know and the idea is you know it's like okay it's one out it's one ball you know the chances are they're not gonna hit that many home runs but I mean when you've got half a million dollars I don't remember what it is per ball I don't think it's it's definitely not like a hundred thousand dollars per ball I don't think but it's still a lot of money to be donated, which is cool. It's good that they do that. Um, it's cool to see like the fans interact. And one of the best catches I saw during the home run derby was this guy in the pool area. He was standing like on a rock in the pool area, and he he jumped, he leapt off the rock, caught the ball, and fell into the bottom pool. It was freaking awesome. And uh, watching Adrian Gonzalez, you know, hit was pretty cool. You know, it's just sort of reminiscent of when he was a Padre. He has definitely grown into a far more um, confident player playing with the Red Sox and right there you saw what I did third baseman range to his left so much and you're not supposed to go to advance if you're on second base when the ball's hit in front of you um, but he was ranging there so much there's no way he would have gotten me at third so that's why I went but like I said about Andrew Gonzalez he has become such a confident player because last season when he went to the home run derby he, he didn't do all that well I think he was just sort of nervous you know he wasn't sure of himself as a slugger um he seems a lot more confident about being a slugger and just being a player all around. Uh, and so maybe my, my early predictions that Gonzalez was going to struggle in Boston are obviously wrong. He's, he's had tremendous success as a ball player uh, and, you know, in Boston, which I'm grateful. Like, I'm glad. I I'm, you know, don't wish any former Padre ill will. Guys like Gonzalez and Peavy, I really just kind of wish them the best. Guys like Chris Young, I could care less because I never really thought he was that good of a ball player in the first place. Um, but so what other former? There's a sh there's so many former Padres out there. It's not even funny. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm just gonna wrap that up. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love All Star Weekend. Well, it's not really a weekend. So it was Monday, Tuesday. But you know, the, the whole All Star experience is cool to see that. And you see like the celebrity baseball or softball game. That's always fun, you know, because it's all lighthearted and that's why as it should be. And that's fun to see that happen. And guys like Raleigh Fingers and uh, Ozzie Smith and who else was there? Ricky Henderson, you know, come out of retirement to play some softball. That's kind of cool. So, anyways, guys, let me go ahead and move on here. Um, just briefly, I talked a little bit in the last commentary about my own baseball season. Um, you went 0 for 4 on Sunday. It was kind of a bad day. First, 
First game, three and a half weeks, something like that. I struck out my first two at-bats. My timing was way off. I was way in front of these pitches. And um, the third at-bat, I hit like I hit one to the 5.5 hole, but the shortstop made a good play on it and, and was able to get the guy at second. So I got a fielder's choice on that. And my last at-bat, uh, this guy hung a slider to me. And, I, oh, man, I just missed it. Uh, it was one of those pitches that if it was midseason, I probably would have hit the ball pretty hard, but I got under it and I flied out to center field. And it sounded great off the bat too. I'm like, damn it, I could I just it was one of those things where typically you don't really see the ball off the bat. I mean like I don't know. I don't really ever remember seeing the ball hit the bat, but I vividly remember seeing the ball hit the bat and that's just I saw it just oh it was like oh my god, I just got under it. Uh, it was it was one of those feelings you're just like, damn it. Uh, but I pitched uh, on Sunday. I pitched three innings, which was great, even though we were getting our asses handed to us because it was a, just an error-filled day all around. And we, and we had so many players missing. We had so many new players playing with us, and it just wasn't like a regular team. So hopefully this coming Sunday will be better. I'll try to take video and incorporate video of my own real-life video into uh, these games. You know, So I can try to bring that to you a little bit more of like a personal touch to it because it's just you right now it's just these gameplays and I really like sharing that with you guys and if you guys like seeing it then um, let me know if you don't don't let me know <laughs> I'm just kidding if you don't like it then let me know you know cause I'll, you know pretty much I'm here um, to put out videos that I like yeah but I'm also here to try to entertain as well because I mean I wouldn't be doing this well I would be well how do you put that without getting in like caught if there was no internet would I be putting videos online no because you couldn't <laughs> but um, you know I like you guys know I mean I love doing this stuff and you know it is for entertainment and I like doing it and like people like to watch it so I'm gonna do it I, I don't want to get to that point where I'm putting stuff out that people don't watch because what's the point then right anyways I want to talk about kind of a big topic um, procrastination and I realized this today, and this is coming from my own personal experience, so please don't think that I'm preaching, and I don't mean to be preaching. Uh, I'm really just announcing my own blunder, and basically, I'm in, a, in a way, I'm just sort of talking to myself about this. If you find influence, and if you find meaning in what I have to say, great. But I'm not trying to preach, so I just kind of make that clear for you guys. Um, here's the situation. I have what's called uh, Calvet, Calvet's Benefits, where my father was in the Marine Corps for 20 years, and he's 10% uh, disabled from his time in the service. And because of that, uh, being a, uh, you know, his son for life be through California, I am uh, able to get school benefits, um, tuition assistance and stuff like that. Basically, what I have to do is you have to submit a form, you have to submit your... Uh, your tax return with it and you got to make under eleven thousand dollars a year which is poverty you really have to be in a real bad spot to take advantage of this but the benefits are great because you don't pay tuition it's picked up by the state so um i was thinking about getting this thing done around april when my you know you did did my taxes i'm like okay yeah i'll get it done you know like april and may you know it's finals time in the last month of the school so i forgot about it June comes around, um, you know, summer school kicks up. I go to Boston. I'm working really hard to make that trip to Boston happen. Doesn't happen. And it's in, in the back of my mind the whole time. And then so finally in the 4th of July, I'm like, oh, crap, I got to get this thing in because I need to get it processed by August so I could have all my tuition crap paid for. Well, I got emails last this last week reminding me, and I've been getting emails like steadily. And, you know, it's sort of been a reminder that, hey, tuition is due first patch of tuition is due on july 14th by noon if you don't pay that then you get dropped from your classes i'm like okay yeah i'm gonna get that thing done and you know it's just was and, and it's not as if i didn't want to do it because it's very very important to me the thing is though is the way i work is i have like a like a priority list and i think most people do for the most part uh unless you just don't have priorities i don't know but um What's been going on on top of that is school stuff. Like, oh, I've got to write this paper. I have to write, read these documents. I have to go to class. I have to go to work. I have to do this. I have to do that. And it got shelved. And it got shelved at the bottom. And I'll think about it. And it, it all it really took was me going to my parents' house, which is about a 10-minute drive west from me, getting my dad to fill out this form, signing it. I sign it. I get my tax return. I mail it. It takes like an hour at most, you know. 
And that's not even counting spending time with my parents. But yeah, I, I just put it off. And so basically, the situation that I have right now in front of me is that I'm going to get dropped from my classes for this fall. And, and I will have to re-register, or not re-register, but I'll have to um, and re-enroll in all these classes. I guess that's re-registering for classes. So I have to re-register for classes. The problem is, is that there's certain classes that I need to graduate on time. And so I've really shot myself in the foot, in the foot this semester by doing this. And it's not like I intended to. And and while I was washing my car today, you know, I haven't washed my car in a long time. And I, a while back, I was like, I'm going to wash my car every week. You know, it's about priorities. It's about doing things that you need to do. And I was washing my car. I'm like, damn, I can't believe this was such a high priority for me. This is the biggest thing going for school. This is how I'm able to go to school. And I let it go down to the bottom of my list, which was irresponsible of me. And so basically, I guess the moral of this story is just like, if if it takes a, just a small amount of time, just get it done, you know? And that's what I told myself. I'm like, Tony, you could have gotten this done in June. You could have gotten this done in May, April. I mean, there were several months that I could have gotten this done, could have gotten it in. Because I called the guys today. I'm like, hey, I just want to check on my application. And they're like, oh, wouldn't you submit it? And I'm like, a weeks back, I lied. Because um, it's only been about a week. And he goes, oh, okay, well, right now we're only at about June 20th submission. So it takes usually three to four weeks. I'm just like, fuck. So now, like I said, I have to, I'm going to have to re-register and everything. And it sucks. It really sucks. So I'm going to have to be very proactive about this. I'm going to email my professors, explain to them what's going on. Um, kind of dodge the I fucked up part. I'm just going to tell them that my Calvets hasn't come in yet. And, uh, and maybe they'll grant me some leniency when it comes to crashing these classes but if it comes to that, which I'm kind of sure it's going to come to that. Um, it sucks. I, I, just, I can't believe I did it because I'm a far more responsible person than that. And so, yeah, it just kind of sucks. So, anyways, um, kind of enough on that. If, I mean, if you take something from that, I'm great, awesome. Um, you know, it's sort of a little lesson that I had learned it, it, you know what? It, it's a lesson that I already know. It's like a refresher, you know? It's just like sometimes you know something and it it takes something, I don't want to say awful because this is not particularly awful. It's a sucky situation. I mean, I'll be, in, I'll be enrolled in classes next semester, um, but it might put me behind by a semester. So uh, we'll see what happens. But anyways, it's just like, like I said, it's like a refresher lesson, if you will. But um Anyways, um, just uh, one quick update before this game ends, which I think I've got just about a minute left before this actual game ends. Um, I'm going to be going to the MLG Anaheim uh, game battle or tournament. I don't know. I've never been to one before. I'm really excited to go. I'm going to be meeting up with a lot of cool people there. Um, I don't know if you guys know Roxy Surfer Chick. She's a Southern Californian commentator. Uh, she was living in Pennsylvania, but now I guess she's back in Southern California. I don't know if you guys know OG Walrus. Uh, I've been talking with him the last couple of days. Um, looks like I'm gonna be meeting up with him, and it looks like we're gonna be doing a video. And I'll be I'll have my camera there, so I'm gonna like vlog about it anyways. But um, we might be doing a video, or I might be part of a video. So we'll stay tuned for that, and I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, I passed my goals. And there, you know, I had a strong showing and stuff, but I'm stuck in double A. But it says that I'm double A bench, which confused me because usually I should be a starter by now after the first set of goals. I don't know. So, so basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the training points that I have, all 197. Uh, I'm gonna put 50 points into my arm because basically I'm just gonna get up to the point where they pass, they're you know, checked off. 50 points into the durability, and then I'm gonna put 90 points into uh, right hand contact. My goal is to get the con right hand contact up to 50%, left hand contact up to 50%, work on the power, uh, and work on the speed, clutch, plate vision, stuff like that. So anyways guys, this is this this has been this video of MLB 11. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll talk to you later.